Hi, I'm Barbara Fankhauser, and I'm a professional storyteller and have been for a number of years. Um, but it's only been in the last few years that I've really begun telling stories out of my life. And um, it's a really exciting um, process. And I'd like to share with you uh, some of the sto a story that I remembered from my childhood. I was lucky to grow up in a, in a very small town, kind of like a little community here, like a suburb like Gresham or, or someplace that uh, um, was small and you kind of knew a lot of your neighbors and I was lucky uh, in that I could go anywhere and my bicycle and meet up my friends and um, I don't know that kids have quite that many options these days, but back then I did. And um, there was a man that lived down the alley from us and he had a dog on a, on a machine shop and that was one of the favorite haunts of the neighborhood kids. Now that's not much of a, a story at this point. He was just a character in the neighborhood. Um, but how you want to look at, you know, you might look around and see who your neighbors are and what little connection, what little stories you might have about them and how you might flesh them out. Um, one way that I find really helpful is you take a big pad and you put a circle in the middle and you put, um, for instance, the name of the man in the alley that lived on the alley from me was Mr. Plano. So I would put Mr. Plano in a circle in the middle of this, of this uh, chart. And then I just start calling out these, these cluster thoughts, I, I call them, where, um, what was the day like? Well, it was, it was summer, it was in Wisconsin, the sky was blue, it was beautiful. His barn, where his workshop was, was um, it was a big old barn. It probably started out, out in life housing horses and cows before cars were even around. But he only had one little corner of it, and he had some, some strange looking machinery and lots of little metal things everywhere. And he had a dog. He had, um, that was the big, one of the big attractions, is his dog blackout. It was a big old gray snouted um, Labrador. And, um, and Blackout was amazing because Blackout could do tricks. Blackout could climb a ladder, go across boards, and come down the other side of the ladder. And we loved to go and see Blackout do his trick. And we could get to his house on bicycles. Um, we go down the alley. There was an alley um, that we loved because you could get anywhere in town through the alley systems. And behind Mr. Blackout's house and barn, there was a woods and then there was the Wisconsin River that flowed by. So we could also get to Mr. Plano's house up the, up the shore of the river and come up through the woods. And when we get there, another cluster would come out. What was in that workshop? Well, I'm not quite sure what he did, but he had hundreds of little pieces of, of metal things that would screw together. And they were L-shaped, and some of them were T-shaped, and you can unscrew this and screw it in over here. And I don't know what they were for. I have no idea. but but they were fascinating to all the neighborhood kids. And I remember he gave me a little tobacco pouch full of little metal pieces that screwed together and I hung on to that for years. So coming back now to that story, I can tell you about a summer day in Wisconsin when I'd get on my bike and I'd take off down that alley and I'd go by a neighbor's yard that had all these flowers and I remember that neighbor because he had bleeding hearts and somebody had told me bleeding hearts were edible and I would try to sneak into his yard and eat his bleeding hearts, and uh, he would chase me away. And then I'd keep going and get down to the end of the alley, and there'd be Mr. Plano's house. And you'd drop your bike in the yard and go down into the wood shop, and there would be Mr. Plano making his little metal things that screwed together. And you'd say, hey, can Blackout come out and play? And he'd come out of his workshop, and he'd set up the ladders and the board across the top, and Blackout would go up, and he'd come across, and he'd come down every time. It was just so much fun to see this incredibly brilliant dog, of course. None of our dogs could do things like that. So that was more than 50 years ago. And I've never forgotten Mr. Plano and his dog Blackout. There's a, an African story that ends by saying that as long as a person's name is remembered and his or her stories go on, they never leave. And so Mr. Plano's still living because I remember Mr. Plano. And that's the thing about the stories that you can collect about your neighbors and your family is telling those stories, they stay with us. Those people in our past stay with us forever. And we pass them on to our friends and our children. And so that's what is so important about collecting these stories from your neighborhood. 
the events, the people, they're treasures, and, and you have the ability to gather them up.